When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Welcome to The Pivot. Ms. Unika J. She is the founder and president of Rewrite 365. She gonna help us get this done. Today, we are talking about how to execute. It is time to get it done, y'all. It is time to get it done, y'all. With time to execute. That's what we're talking about today. Thanks for watching. You're watching The Pivot with Stephanie Humphrey. And today we are talking about how to execute. And I am thrilled to have our guest here. It is Ms. Unika J. She is the founder and president of Rewrite 365. She's going to tell us all about what she does. And she's going to help us get this done because, you know, we've had our plans. We got our vision. We got our mindset. We've done everything we need to do to get to this point. But I think sometimes we do tend to get stuck. So, Unika, thanks so much for being here with us on The Pivot today. It is my pleasure. It's such an honor to be able to share space with you um, and to even share whatever it is that you would have me to share with your listeners and your, the folks who watch this. So I'm excited to be here. Fantastic. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. So I, um, I grew up on the training side of the house um, in corporate America and then stepped into the dark side, which we call operations. I walked away from that about six years ago and started my own firm. Um, and what we do at Rewrite is we help organizations and individuals rewrite their story. Um, we have three key focuses, uh, strategy, um, helping people walk through putting together their corporate strategy and then executing on those strategies. Um, we also do culture. And so we work with organizations to actually help them get awards like the top places to work in Philadelphia or great places to work in New York. And so we get all of the criteria, get that, you know, um, and then do a needs, um, what would you call it? We do a, um, a, a culture scan of the organization mm -hmm. where their deficits are and then write a plan and execute that plan within the organization for them to be able to get those awards. And then the third leg of the business is leadership development. And so we have a host of things there from executive coaching um, to a couple of communities. I, I have a community called Lead Her for African-American women who lead. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have some other learning communities. So that piece, that leadership development piece has training and coaching and community um, in that. And so we have now four coaches, two facilitators, and one trainer and an office person. So it's wow. been a cool ride over the last six years. Awesome. Awesome. So the team is in place. Everything is popping. I have to tell the story, though. You know, we met at a friend's house over some New Year's many, many moons ago uh, where she was hosting a vision board party. And I had actually never done a vision board. I, had, I was familiar with the concept, but I had never actually gotten together with a group of women and, you know, sat down and really thought about what I wanted my next year to look like and, and things like that. And and I just was so struck by your your presence, number one, the things you told us. I think I still have the little worksheet you gave us somewhere um, that I refer to often. And I definitely still have my vision board tucked away. And and I just it there was just something, you know, when you when you meet that person and there's just that something and and you just remember them, they're very memorable to you. They make an impact on on you and your life in, in a very short amount of time without uh, a, a lot of, you know, connection and, and contact and conference. I don't think we chatted uh, that much either, but you know, a lot of the things you said, it's so funny. I got to tell you this story too, really quick. Um, just yesterday. And, and I, and I kid you not, I was having lunch with a friend and, you know, she was having some problems and, 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 and we were both sort of sharing our, our, our challenges, you know, in the moment. And, and I was, we were talking about friendship and I used your analogy about some friends get to go to the living room, some friends get to the kitchen, some friends make it all the way into the bedroom. And you got to you figure out where those friends need to be, um, you know, in your life as you move along and, and understand that sometimes that might need to change. So I thank you for that. Um, and again, I think that just speaks to the the impact you had on me um, at that event in that moment. And, and, I, and I felt very strongly when I was putting this particular episode together um, that you were the person that could help us get stuff done. You know, if there was anybody that I knew that I could call on, um, you would be that person. So again, I'm just very, very happy to have you here. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. It was an amazing night. Like I, I, I remember um, it was an interesting invite, you know, to come to someone's house. Right. And so I was like, mm-hmm. oh, OK, I'll come. Uh, but when I came in there, the level of power and I remember you having this presence without saying anything. And I was like, oh, she's cool. You know, I was like, I want to know her. <laughs> so I was so glad we ended up connecting on social media, even though we don't talk, like I follow and pay attention and watch and all those things. And so it feels like we're connected and like we've had a thousand yeah. conversations, even though this is the first one we've, we're truly having together since that time. We are connected. We are connected. So let, let's dive in. Let's talk about it. Why is it so hard, I think, for some people to, to pull that trigger, to actually finally get started. They've done all the work. They're ready to go by all intents and purposes, but but they can't quite pull that trigger and they never actually start the process of, of executing their plans. Why is it so hard for some people to do that? So I think based on just things I've experienced either in the executive coaching space, my own personal life and things I've overcome and even being in corporate America, it comes down generally to two things. One is fear of failure and the second is fear of success. Mm. Right. So there's that piece where it's like, well, this looks good on paper. It, it, It sounded good when I was writing it out. I think I've thought through all of the things that could happen. But what if it doesn't work? And that fear of failure drives, you know, that's kind of the the tree, if you will, for procrastination. That's the tree for overthinking. That's the tree. Like that fear of failure just, just puts people in a place where there's a total blockage of them being able to move forward because they are anticipating all of the worst case scenarios, mm-hmm. even though they've planned for them, even though they've put in there, if this happens, I'll do this. And so right. the fear of failure is one. The other one's a little more interesting, right? Because it's that fear of success. What if it does work? What if the business does take off? What if I am able to write the book? What if I am able, and we're talking about these big goals, but even on my day, what if I do start going to the gym? What if I do start taking the steps to be a better parent or a better spouse or a better citizen? Um, what does that look like? Because success requires work. You know, it's not just a one and done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Say that, say that again. Say that again. It requires work. Success right. requires work. Yes. And I think people get stuck because they it, it, it looks so good. I mean, I have, a, you know, a ton of these these books that you've written in and you've gotten your dreams together and mm-hmm. you're planning things out. It's cute in the book, is <laughs> you know, the TJ Maxx and grab a new journal. It right. looks good there. But whether it's fear of success or, for, or fear of failure that's holding you back, once you start executing, the mess comes up. It becomes mm-hmm. a mess. And you have to get your hands dirty in the part of execution. And I think that's what really holds people back. Wow. You said a, you said a mouthful. I think I think that's very true. I, I talked a lot about uh, the idea of uh, in my uncertainty episode, the idea that I was uncertain about doing this show uh, because I knew it was going to require something of me uh, that I wasn't necessarily that I didn't necessarily feel like I was ready to give. It was going to require me to be vulnerable. It was going to require me to put myself out there in a way that I hadn't in the past. You know, I could I could keep folks at arm's length when I'm just giving them tech tips. Um, but when I have to sort of invite them into my personal experience, it's a little different story. And and to your point, a part of that was what if this actually works? Like, what if people really like this and respond to it? And I got to keep doing it over and over and over again. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I'm really ready to do that. I don't know if I need y'all all up in my business like that. So it right. was it was that was definitely on my mind as I was thinking about, you know, whether or not this was even going to happen. But I think ultimately I'm a servant and I felt like if this can help anybody, you know, just the one person that just stumbled upon it, you know, at that one time and, and caught five minutes of it and, and really decided to make some sort of change in their life, then it would be worth it just for that. So, um, you know, but but yeah, that, that fair success is real. And, and the idea that success requires work, because I feel like I may be in a season right now where things are going pretty well. You know, I got this going on and this is going on. But that don't mean I get to just sit back and coast now. I can't put my feet up. You know, you got to keep your foot on that gas. It, you, new levels require new, you know, uh, levels of effort. And 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 it really does um, or it can um, hamstring some people sometimes. It Absolutely. really can. That's that's a that's a really interesting, really interesting concept. 
So when do you know that it is time to start executing? Is there a time? Is there a point when, you know, you you can feel as if you've done all of the preparation and you've done all the things and and that it, and that it's time when when do you know that or, or, or do you ever know it? So here's the thing. I think it, it some of that part, <clears throat> excuse me, it depends on the person. And, and this mm-hmm. and let me tell you why. There are some people that execute and they don't need it to be all put together. Like they they will, I've seen people online um, that will go out and just go and do the thing. And if they fall down, they're like, oh, that didn't work. I'll try something different. Um, and so they just have this fearless approach to executing, right? Mm-hmm. And it feels okay for them in their soul. And then, you know, they, it's, they're wired that way. They're more risk taking, they're ready to rock and roll. For those folks that may not have, you know, that, hide that full cup of risk, you know, where like I can do, I'll do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, Once you've planned, if you find yourself unable to continue to write on that plan, it's time to execute. There's no other piece that's, that's waiting for you except for you to hit go and start it. And so if you, if you don't have, you know, if you're a person that, you know, I just move forward, I'm ready to go. You may test and that may be part of your execution. I think one of the biggest things when you're thinking about when to execute is breaking it up in your mind that it's this huge button, like I got to hit boom and now I'm going. There's little pieces of the plan that have to happen. So, you know, I I always joke with people, you know, at the beginning of the year, everyone wants to lose weight just about, you know, people are there going to the gym. (laughs) Um, But I'm like, it's not setting foot in the gym is not when the execution starts. When I make up my mind, when I when I buy the membership, when I get the, the clothes that I'm going to wear, when, then I get in the car, then I get to the gym. Now I've started that one time, then I go back and I got, you know, so there's, right. there's all little executions that happen before you actually achieve the goal or you actually complete the plan. And so I think knowing at what point you are in the journey and when is a good place for you to, to, get, to get one of those small victories, because mm-hmm. those small victories fuel you for the next execution. And even if you have a failure, then you just pivot and make a decision on how, what are you going to do next to continue your execution? So I, I think it's different for each person on when it is. But if you find yourself sitting too long, you go back and look through those journals and you're like, oh, man, this was a great plan for me. I thought I was going to do this, but I never did it. Mm-hmm. To execute on those. Once you've written it out and you look at that and you say, this is good, go and do it. <laughs> then, then it's time. That's a that's a good rule of thumb. I think I fall somewhere in the middle there. I, I definitely don't like to wait. I'm very, very impatient. Uh, so I don't like to wait for anything. Uh, but I'm not just going to jump out the plane and build a parachute on the way down. <laughs> either. I'm, not, I'm definitely not one of those people. I'm like, I need to know a little bit about, you know, what's going to happen and, and, you know, some of the steps involved and things like that. So I think I'm somewhere in the middle, but I definitely um, am, am typically ready to go head first into whatever it is. And it's just like, let's just, let's go after this more of my impatience. I think than than just wanting to reach a goal or anything. It's just wanting to get done. Um, that that's a good, that's a good, that's a good um, indicator though. That's like, like a good measurement. <laughs> when we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe. We all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure.
invest in ourselves. We all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. We talk about that whole idea of... of uh, analysis paralysis where people think that as soon as I take this next class or as soon as I get this next certification or as soon as I get you know it's always as soon as I and I have to do this one more thing and I have to check this one more thing or research this one more thing and and it's just like do you really do you did you need that you know it just I, I really want people to to get out of that mindset that that there's one more thing because there's there's probably not I mean if you if you're really being honest with yourself I think you know you're probably ready to your point to to at least get started on one part of the plan. Um, I think everybody usually has something that they could be doing to to get those wheels moving forward, um, even if the entire plan's not necessarily all together just yet. So. Absolutely. I think there's one thing um, that I didn't share is that when you're looking at your plan and you come to a point, like let's say you have a huge goal that you've broken down into smaller goals. And so each of those require you to do some things to execute. Mm -hmm. When I'm looking at that, one of the things I ask myself is, is there a wall or a way? Mm. If there's a wall that re just requires me to do some more planning to remove the wall so I can fully execute. If there's a way and I can see a pathway to me being able to execute, the only thing that's in my way at that point is me. Ooh. And so I have to deal with myself because it's not a wall, it's me. So, boy, see, now I'm going to be saying that to people next time. <laughs> they said, wall or away? <laughs> Just <laughs> dropping gems, dropping gems. OK, so now what is what would you say the the mindset shift is between planning and executing? Like, where do you need to get your mind to to sort of move to that point. I mean, I think this is a little kind of just an extension of the of the of the last question, but but I think I think there may be something there. I felt like there could be something there as far as mindset goes um, that could help people sort of make that shift. So where do you see that mindset shift happening and how do you see that happening? So to, for me, it happens. Be, and, and even with clients that I'm working with before you start the plan, mm -hmm. right? Even if I'm talking to a, a room full of um, C-suite executives, do you really want this? Can you afford to do it right now? Mm. Does it make sense? What else is on your plate? What like if you if because the plan, the reason why we don't execute oftentimes is we didn't have enough skin in the game. It wasn't as important to us as we thought it was. Other people are doing it. So we should probably do it. It just makes sense right now. Um, but it wasn't something that we actually wanted or that we had a, sh a true core desire. And I see this in organizations and with individuals. So the mindset change has to happen in the beginning before you wow. in to paper, start typing, talking it into your phone, whatever the case may be. Do and, and I have this saying, if it's not a heck yes, it's a no. Mm -hmm. So if it's not, if, if I'm looking at this, do you have space? in your life or in your company or, you know, in, in your family to plan for this thing to actually be executed. Cause it may not be a no, it may be a not now. Right. right? And it could be something I say, okay. I remember um, before I left corporate to start my business, I wanted to do it. Like when I was 30, mm -hmm. I, was, I don't want to be, I want my own business. I want, it just didn't make sense. I was raising five kids. Like it was just, there, I would not have been able to do the things I'm doing now. So it was a not now but I didn't lose track of that goal that I had because I just knew the season wasn't correct. So right. as you're thinking about planning, as you're thinking about establishing your goals, in order for you to execute, you have to really want it, but it has to be the season. And I don't mean this philosophical thing. Seasonality can be measured. You can look and say, okay, do I have too many things going on right now? Do mm -hmm. I have this Place and the time commitment to be able to do what's required for this to take place. Um, do I have support? Mm -hmm. Are there people that are going to say, hey, you know what, Stephanie, run out and do that. I got your back. I'm, I'm going to hold this down or I can do this for you. I can step in in these places. Because if you don't have those three things, chances are you'll never execute. You'll have all the beautiful journals with a bunch of plans that go undone because you didn't make that mindset shift in the first place. Wow. So y'all heard that right. The mindset has to start right at the beginning. You know, you have to know that this is what you want to do. Um, if he wanted to, he would, as the, as the kids on the Internet say, or if she wanted to, she would. Um, it, it, it really does that. 
that I hadn't really thought about it like that. Um, that really makes a difference in in the way you approach the plan. It's like, if, is this something you actually want to do? Is this something you would do regardless of, of the other circumstances or, or are you, and are you prepared? Are you set up for this? Is, is this the right time? And I like that you said that uh, seasonality can actually be measured because do you have the resources and the time and the support and, and all the other things in place, you know, to get this done? I think a lot of people, get stuck in the plan part and like, well, this is how it should work when I do get to execute it. But they don't actually think about that other part. Um, like, are you even prepared to make this happen? And we talked about that. And uh, I had uh, I think you do know Melinda Emerson. I had her on. Yeah, we we talked about the plan before the plan, if you will. Um, and the idea that some people spend more time planning their vacations than they do planning if they're ready to go out and make a change as big as, you know, leaving their job or going back to school or starting a business or anything like that. And it's like, you really need to assess whether or not you have the resources across the board to even get this done. And right. then is this something that you actually really want to do? So that makes a ton of sense. Um, Y'all, you got to make sure your stuff is together. That's yeah. it. And it, and it, but it's, it's multi levels, you know, it's multiple levels. You can take all the classes, you can get all the certifications you want. You can, you can do all the research, but there are, there's levels to this. And, and a lot of things have to be in place for the execution to happen. So um, that makes a lot of sense. So I, I, we talked about this, but you know, execution can obviously start while you're still in the planning stage. So how would you suggest people sort of manage that process if if they're if they're wanting to start because they they feel like they're at that point but they know that there are still other pieces that need to be um like kind of laid out yeah so i think it's so when you're thinking about it like let's say we have this huge goal even if the goal let's let's do a small one i'll play with for for the sake of uh of, you know, simplicity, we'll look at like just weight loss, right? So mm -hmm. if I say, I want to lose 20 pounds, that that's my goal. I want to lose 20 pounds by December of uh, 2022. Okay. Now I've, the, 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 one of the challenges that people have in understanding how to break it out is because their goal in the beginning is not smart. They, they're not planning towards something that's smart. It's not specific. It's not measurable. It's not attainable. Um, S-M-A-R is not realistic and it's not time bound. So mm -hmm. me saying I want to lose 20 pounds by December 31st of 2022, that's attainable. If we look scientifically of how many pounds you can lose per week, whatever the case may be. Now, once I have that goal, in order for me to start executing, and let's say there's other things, that's kind of a big goal, right? That's 20 pounds. I can't wake up tomorrow and it be done. Right. Check the box. It's going to require some work along the way. So now I look and say, OK, I, I, Unica, I live my life in quarters. So everything for me is around the quarter. What now we are now in the third quarter. What do I need to do in this quarter in order for me to admit, to hit this goal, this six month goal? Right. What do I need to do in this third quarter? Now I can take that quarter and say, well, wait a minute. What do I need to do in July? Mm. OK, now I understand what I need to do in July and I make a list. These are to do's I need to do in July if I'm going to hit that December goal, because now right. it makes it real intangible. It's not just this philosophical goal, you know, that's a kind of floating out there. What do I need to do in July? And Stephanie, you take it a step further and say, what do I need to do this week? What do I need to do Wednesday? What needs to be done today? Well, I don't have a gym membership. OK, I probably should research it. Am I going to do it at home? Am I going to buy one of the bikes? Am I going to subscribe to something? Do I want to be around other people now? Today, the one thing that I can do to get closer to that goal or to execute, start executing on that plan that I have to achieve what I want to do in December is today I'm just going to research gyms, local gyms, and see what the pricing is and see if I can afford to buy a gym membership or do I need to subscribe to something, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's as simple as taking whatever that goal is and taking it down to what is the daily action that needs to take place in order for you to execute. I'm already in the process of executing once I start. It's just then following it all the way through to the end. And so I think that what, where people kind of get stuck is they don't break it up. They don't think about what, what can I do today? I used to keep a post-it on my laptop to say, what do you need to do today to leave your job? What do you need to do? And I used to just have what you need to do because I didn't need my CEO seeing the last part. Of it. But I, <laughs> what do you need to do? And that became a filter, though, for me 
And, you know, I could walk in a store and they're having a sale when I may want to buy a bunch of things. No, you need to save the money. So what do I need to do today? Not buy the shoes, even though wow. I'm not going on vacation, even though my girlfriends are going. Why? Because I want something different in three years or I want something different next week or whatever it may be. But what do you need to do? That's how you can execute along the way. Wow, man, I'm I'm taking notes here because I have to admit, full disclosure, I am not the best at plan I, I I won't say plan I guess planning is the word I mean I can execute all day but but I I'm typically just I don't know how to do I'm not necessarily going flowing with the wind blows going with it whichever way the wind blows but but my 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 plan is always very loose and and it's not as as structured as in six months, I want to do this, so I need to be doing X, Y, and Z. It, it can be. I think sometimes when I when I do have a more smart goal to to go towards, because um, and I I, I actually I, I talk about this all the time. I had a I had a three point plan um, when I when I left my job. It, I I needed to refinance my house. I wanted to get a smaller car, and and there was a dollar amount that I needed to have saved that I wanted to have saved before I would leave my job. So you know. I did. I kind of I, I definitely didn't necessarily set a date to have it done, but it was just when those three things were done. That's when I was going to leave. So it, it kept me focused a little bit, but I definitely don't do enough of that sort of here is the ultimate end goal. So let me back out of that six months, a year, five years, and do things every single day towards that goal. So I'm, I'm, I'm not as disciplined as I need to be with that just yet, um, but I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna work on it because we having this conversation. I'm like, I, I feel like I can do it now. I feel like I could do it now. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing, creating, making moves that move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Pull up a chair, take your seat at the Black Table with me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network. Every week, we'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Um, what do people usually get wrong about execution? Oh my gosh. Oh, there's so many different things. Let me think. Let me think about <laughs> so much that I want to share. Um, I think one of the things is false execution. Mm -hmm. um, activity or busyness that isn't pulling through what you really want, right? Like, so for example, if we go, if we stick with the same example, I could say I'm executing because I'm at TJ Maxx. I don't know why I don't shout them out twice, um, mm -hmm. but I'm at TJ Maxx and I'm buying more fitness clothes. Mm -hmm. and then I go over to Target and I buy some more pants. And then I get, you know, I saw a cute gym bag and I, I dump on Amazon and I buy a water bottle. And so that's a lot of action, but there are no results associated with that action. It's not really getting you because now in July, on Wednesday, I've made the purchase of the clothing, of the bag and all that. So I feel like that felt good, right? Felt good to buy the things. I'm getting closer to it. Um, on Thursday, I don't do anything. On Friday, I don't do anything. So those actions, that was just busyness. And so yeah. that's false execution, a false start where people are saying, OK, some people think just by writing it in their journal, they're like, well, it said, you know, write the dream down or write the goal down and give it a deadline. And now I'm there. That's not it. You're not you haven't done the actual work. You're doing the busyness around the work, which is not which is, you know, a pitfall for edu for um execution because your body and your mind is is giving yourself gold stars saying i did something i mm -hmm. i i started i bought the i went to bar i bought the, the the journal i got a nice pen i wrote it out i even shared it with a friend mm -hmm. um, so what like and then what are you doing what's next and so i see people do that a lot where they have these false starts and they get so excited about the false start. The other error that I see people or a challenger, whatever that people do um, in executing is they 
allow themselves to be overtaken by a failure in execution, right? So if we're using this same thing about weight loss, I got the clothes, I got the membership, I went to the gym, I went to the gym three times a week and week, you know, next week, then the week after I went all the times I'm eating right, then I go to a party. Mm-hmm. And now I, I, I had, you know, I, they had chocolate cake. I didn't have one piece of chocolate cake. I had three pieces of chocolate cake. So now there's like this pothole on this journey that you hit, but the pothole doesn't stop the whole car from moving, right? It's just a momentary bump that now I have to say, okay, hold on. How do I get back on track? And so people will stop their execution because mentally they can't get past this small failure that they had in the execution process. You know, even if you think, I know you're in tech and you do, I see you do a lot of things online. And so I see, um, I just got into Reels. Okay. <laughs> for me. Um, and so I, you know, I'll post one and I just still don't understand the, you know, I, maybe I need to consult, but I will post one and it's like a hundred people look at it. I'll post another one and 20,000 people look and I'm like, I put more work into one for it. With- right, that, that nobody watched. <laughs> that was a process. I'm going to need to come see my work. <laughs> that point though, imagine if I'm trying to, if I'm going to execute on doing, you know, getting my Instagram following up or getting my reels to a certain viewer, you know, whatever that is, that one setback, that pothole, if I stop, then I'm, I'm never going to get to the real goal because one little piece of the execution didn't work and I allowed that failure to overtake me mm-hmm. and say, this was a dumb goal. The whole thing's stupid because I just didn't work. I ate the cake, so I'll never be able to lose the weight. No, you have to say, okay, now what did we learn there? Let's see, what time did I post that? Or what's going to be my strategy the next time I go to a party and they have cake? Because I don't want to keep having these same failures because I have a goal to get to or I have right. a plan that I need to execute on. Right. That's so important for people not to let those things trip them up. And I see that a lot um, because I am in that space. You know, I, I come across a lot of people that want to be content creators and and influencers and, and things like that. And they are looking at their numbers and, well, my following's not growing. And I put this post out and I did all this work and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And nobody's watching. I'm like, do y'all know how long I've been doing this little 60 second tech break that you see every week, you know, and, 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 and maybe sometimes I get a bunch of people, a bunch of eyeballs, maybe sometimes nobody watches it. You know, I feel like it's my best work, but, but it got 12 views. Um, but, but you do, you had the consistent, and I, and I tell them, you know, to, to that, to that point, I always tell them, I'm like, it's the consistency that is going to get you there. You know, you may not necessarily do it right out the box. You're not, you, the likelihood that you're going to go viral is small. So, so you need to figure out what you can do consistently because like how much am I supposed to post and when and and you can look at all and this is this is for you as well. You can look at all those analytics all day. Um, at the end of the day, those companies and their algorithms are what they are. You know, we don't have a whole lot of insight into them. So, you know, I think it's incumbent upon all of us and, you know, I'm speaking to you and, and to content creators in general to post what you love, post what you think will help um, and, and post when you are moved to do it. I, I think anything else is is if you wanted to do it more, it's fine. If you wanted to do it less, it's fine. But but anything else other than than doing it for you and mm-hmm. and for the reasons you've decided you want to do it is going to drive you crazy. It really, really is. As somebody that has been on social media for way too long and I get and I get so caught up in that in my own head. It's like at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to disappear, obviously, um, right. and be like, you know what? I ain't posting that more because they, they, these people ain't watching whatever. You, you still want to be adding that value to whomever is watching. But um, but it has to work in your within the framework of, of what you're doing and, and, and why you're doing it. So um, we'll, ch- we'll chat offline about that. Cause I can, I think I can help you. Uh, but it, it definitely social media in particular is such a unique animal. Um, and, and there's so many, uh, technical, but also psychological things that go into it mm-hmm. that, you know, it, it's easy to get caught up. It's so easy to get caught up. And, and I'm kind of on a journey now just to, you know, try to provide as much value as I can for the people that follow me, try to engage with the community I already have um, and grow. But at the end of the day, you know, I can only do so much and, 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 and be okay with, with that thing. And, um, and that, and that's all you can really do when it comes to that, honestly, like, you know, we can talk editorial calendars all day long, but um, at the end of the day, you know, we can all only do so much um, when it comes to that, but um, sidebar. 
Yeah, what what you said though ties right in with execution because you mm. talk about you have the the third thing that I would add that is a problem with that that I see people fall into with execution is comparison. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there's like you launched your business and your business, you only did 10 grand. And then you see someone posting receipts that they made 10 grand in an hour. And right. Like, oh, I must have done something wrong. And I've seen people go rework their whole strategy. And I'm like, just to your point, be consistent with what you're called to do, what feels right for you. That's and right. Producing results more here, I think, than all of these intangible, you know, these other ways that people are looking at it. So comparison on execution. Well, you know, if you think about it, if we go back to the weight and I say I want to lose 20 pounds and, you know, I'm in a bunch of these Apple Watch competitions with people, mm-hmm. mostly guys, which I need to change because they. Yeah, they run a mile and they're and I'm like, they closed all the rings. Let me go back. And- right. <laughs> <laughs> like you did one workout. Hold on. But that comparison. If you, it, depending on, you know, if like I'm competitive, so that drives me. I'm like, okay, let me go, let me get out here and do some more stuff because you're not mm-hmm. going to win. But it, on the flip side, if I'm like, oh my gosh, that person, you know, went to the gym, they closed their rings, it's only two o'clock and I just, oh, I got it. That, that stops people right there. That's a, that's, and they will stop their execution and rework a plan to catch up with someone. And you don't even have, you're not playing with the same deck. Exactly. You have the same tools in front of you, you you know, and if I talk about weight loss, it could be metabolism, whatever. If we talk about launching a business, some people may have seed money. Some people may not. Some people may have estate. Some people may not. Some people may have a mentor that's amazing. Some people may not. Some experience. Some may not. You're comparing yourself with a bunch of variables that you have no idea of what's really behind what that person is doing. And so you're reworking a plan that you should have just stuck with your own stuff. That's right. That's right. What they say, comparison is the thief of joy yes. all day. My yes. goodness, my goodness. And and, and social media is, whew, that's a whole, that's a whole nother conversation, child. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. Black Power. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? When we invest in ourselves, We're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing, creating, making moves that move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Um, Any final thoughts or tips for our viewers? So I think, here's the thing. Whatever you really want, plan for it. Right. Mm-hmm. And 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 I and you brought up a good point in the beginning where you said people spend more time planning their vacations than they do other things. It's the same. I see people get married. They plan for the wedding, but not for the marriage. Mm-hmm. I see people plan to give birth, but not have a plan for the child. You see people plan to launch the business, but they don't have a plan for the business. You know, and you can find out, you know, kind of test yourself, because if I was going to launch a business, so, so to speak, well, I always ask people what how, what type of business or how are you going to file? How are you going to be registered with the state? Where will you incorporate? Where and they're like what? Right. No. Okay. Well, how are you going to? Even thought about none of that. Yeah. How are you going to make money? How are you going to? What are? What's going to be your expense line? How much are you willing to spend? I don't know. I, I didn't think about that. And so nothing. No. There's not a plan that's too big for you to accomplish. But consider everything. And that's that seasonality, making mm-hmm. sure that you have support um, and making sure that you, that it's something that within yourself, you actually want. Once you've decided that, break it down and give every single piece a deadline. It's not only for your own accountability, but it's the, it feels so good when you check off that one thing. You, you're when not you, kidding, boy. 
you run to the next milestone, like, okay, I did that. I can go do the next thing. I got, I got the workout clothes. I got the membership and I went one time and I didn't die. So I can go back. <laughs> I want to go back again. And, and that piece, when you break it down into small chunks, 20 pounds is different than two pounds in a week, mm-hmm. right? 20 pounds seems like a lot, but that two pounds. And even if I get to 1.5, if I get to 1.7, if I only lose one, I still have some achievement that's there. Um, and I think lastly, don't get discouraged if it doesn't go as fast as you thought. When I was in corporate and as I'm working with, you know, with executives now and even in my own business, sometimes we have the wrong timeline. <laughs> sometimes we're like, I'm like, I'm going to do two million by such and such time. Right. <laughs> like, ma'am. Money. Who are you? <laughs> so those things like you, you, you know, and, that, and, and sometimes it seems realistic. You may have a smart goal and you're like, that seems realistic. I have this run rate. I ran the numbers. I could do that if all the levers pull and go the right way. Right. But they may not in your plan. And it's OK to rework it. It is OK to rework that plan, but still head towards execution. Fantastic. This was just an awesome, awesome conversation. I am uh, so grateful and thankful that you spent some time to share with us. If you guys would like to follow Unika, she is on LinkedIn and Instagram at Unika J. Make sure you follow her. You see the type of knowledge and and skill and and wisdom she brings to, to everything. Unika, thank you so much for being on The Pivot. Thank you. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure.